Hey everyone, this is Michael for Spirit Comics. Welcome to my review of Red Hood and the Outlaws, number 7. This cover is kind of funny. I mean, not because Jason has already started to show how he gets along with Bizarro. And then we see the big guy right there just holding a little dandelion. You know, he may be strong and, you know, brutish, but he's also, you know, he also has a tender heart in a way. And this story is called, How Do You Solve a Problem Like Bizarro? Now, I there is a different team on the on this book there's Scott Lobdell who's still writing at this time we have Mirka Mirka Cloak or um the artist and I'm not sure what the breakdowns means. I didn't see that in the previous issue. But uh, Veronica Gandini is still on the colors. So we have most of the previous team still on, on the book. Anyway, we get into the story, and apparently Jason Todd has gone back to the headquarters of Red Mask, or somehow he's gotten all of it, all of Red Red Mask goons together, and he says, "You know, great to have y'all here." Who wants to go first? And they say, "Who? What do you? What the hell do you think you're doing?" And uh, to shut up and listen, because I'm only going to say this once. He's, he's telling them that. They had a pretty good, pretty easy under Black Mask smuggling drugs in and out of Gotham City, etc., etc. He said that was then. This is now. Black Mask is no longer a consideration. Well, that's putting it lightly. He says how he's in charge, and that. He says, I think preying on the addicted makes you the worst kind of scum in this city. He says, which is why you should consider yourselves out of business as of now. Take your crap and get out of Gotham City tonight and you might live to see the morning. Any questions? And then this dude says... Just one, Mr. Big Mouth American. What are you going to do now? Me? Not a damn thing, he says, sitting there so calmly. And there's a reason why he's not going to do a damn thing. Because behind the guy who's pointing a gun at him is Bizarro. Because we see the gun freezes up. Me and friend, he referenced me and Bizarro. Oh yeah, I forget, he did say something about that. Uh, my friend though, he's going to unleash holy hell on you mooks. Oh! I mean, he, he can really bring down the house. So we start, this is how we start off the story. An ex-Robin and a faulty Superman clone. Tell me that doesn't sound like the greatest non-team ever. Ha! <laughs> Don't take it personal, Yuri. It's just business. But left his own devices. He's going to show us how bizarre it is, kind of like he was. 
he's a little over the top. Bizarro! Hmm? What did we say about being too mean to these guys? Wham! And when you see a back, uh, flashback, Robin, enough! And he's like wailing on this dude. Wham, wham, wham! Like I have any room to talk. Not so hard. Me am sorry, read him. Oof! I mean, he drops the guy and hits the floor really hard. Great. Let's finish these guys before... What? Oof! Oof! Me have you read him? Me looking forward to crushing anyone who hurt Bizarro's only friend besides Red Her, he says under his breath. And pup up. And who do we get? Killer Croc! Which is kind of strange, as Redhead will point out. He says, didn't I hear you got drafted into that suicide squad? And so this dude says, you didn't know? Ha, huh, Rich. Black Mask sold me this freak when he was still around. I found he's going to have, he's good to have for, have on hand for protection. Arr. And Bizarro says, double, Grr. But then, Bizarro uses his freeze vision. I mean, his, fr his frost. Croc man hurt red him. Uh-oh. There's nothing worse than an angry Bizarro. Thrash! He blows heat breath directly at Killer Croc's head, and then goes, and then uses his hands and knocks his head off. Jason's saying, Bizarro, don't! Because he's under the impression this is actually Killer Croc. Bizarro's like, hmm, right. That Onyx face thief... He never said we were buying no stinking synthetics. In other words, it's not the real Killer Croc. Hey, wait. I think I've made my point. We're finished here. Bizarro, did you know he was a robot that he wasn't alive? And he says, be honest. And Bizarro's like, sure. Bizarro knew. Me knew. But I'm at the one. And I don't, don't think Bizarro was lying because he really has no reason to. He has no ulterior motive. Now, we're back at Ma Gunn's home for the criminally infirmed. Also the current headquarters of the Outlaws. Now this is where you're going to see a little bit of change in the team. There's still Jason Todd, Bizarro, and Artemis, but there's a little change here. I even felt bad for yelling at Bizarro. Is that crazy? For anyone else besides you? Yes, that's Artemis. Uh, can you believe it? This is Artemis. Artemis, I'm being serious. Jason, so was I. That's Artemis, dressed down, not in her... Not dressed as a warrior. Look, I get it. You had your, your nose buried in my computer... Trying to track down your above raw. 
you don't want to hear about my problems. And she says, it is not your problem alone, Jason. I supported your decision to try to work with Bizarro. That means that I am equally responsible for his actions going forward. That's Artemis. Can you believe it? Which is why I need you to see this. It's been a while since I've read this issue. And it's just mind-blowing the differences between the two. Granted, we have not yet seen her dressed down in the, in the previous issues. So she found something that she wants to show. To Jason. I was able to hack into the computer archive at LexCorp. Thanks to whoever designed this program on your computer. How do we? Know, how do you know it wasn't me? She doesn't say anything. He says, "Fair point." <laughs> so we read. So we see this uh, recording. Test subject BZ-04, day 147. We're quite delighted today, as we've managed to complete the genome mapping of the samples. It is an accomplishment I'm convinced is unparalleled in the annals of axenobiology. It has become clear. Oh yeah, this, uh, this is over here. Uh, test subject BZ-04, day 267. It has become clear that we are more successful than anyone dared imagine. I am starting to wonder if that is a good thing. Like the previous te test subjects, they are highly unstable, both physically and emotionally. So we're they're back over here, you know, looking at the computer. Jason says, how many of these things did they try to make? According to these files, nearly a dozen. Yes, that is Artemis. Most of them died in the anaotic stage. I, I can't pronounce that word. Our own Bizarro, he had never left the chamber before we met him. So they click on one of the folders. The one just prior, see for yourself. Now this doesn't say which day it is. But anyway, I am speaking quietly, though to be honest, I don't know why. The subject can hear us from anywhere in the complex. This dude looks really ragged. He goes on to say, he can see us anywhere in the country. I, if I am speaking to you, it is only because he allows it. Imagine that. Imagine why he wants you to know. What he wants you to know. I'm officially. I officially begged my employer today to let me stop. I explained that until we can perfect the process, if it is even possible, this clone could represent an apocalyptic class event that could mean the end of all life on Earth. Imagine if it grows to maturity, physically, but not mentally. We'd all be one tantrum away from being tossed into the sun. So there's more footage. This is a te same test subject, BZ-04, day 493. What? What have we done? No! God forgive us. And that's one of the test subjects. And... This is a test subject BZ dash eight 
eight five, I believe. Day one. Over six billion dollars and no closer to success. Very disappointing. How do you want us to proceed, sir? I want them destroyed. All of them. None of this ever happened. <laughs> Guess they missed one. Bizarro was supposed to be destroyed. So they're looking at the footage and Jason says, Am I being stupid bringing him here? We are, we're already taking a risk setting up in Ma Gunn's estate. Is it too much that I'm trying to trust him? So Artemis gets up and we get a, a fair look at her. And I'm talking about the way she's drawn. Now remember, in the past six issues, she was shown as a very strong, big, busted Amazon warrior. Now, even if she didn't have the, the armor on, I would think there would still be something to her upper body portion than what we're not seeing here. That's not really the question, Jason. It's whether or not you trust yourself to do the right thing when it matters. I mean, they draw her still be they draw her beautifully here. She's a she's attractive. Cute even, but you know. anyways, what are you saying? Kill him before he kills us? No. I'm not arrogant enough to believe my life is more important than any creature's. But there are a lot of innocent people who don't have the resources you and I do. But what do we owe them, she says. And so, Jason knows what to do. Wayne Manor. Sometimes I still can't believe I ever lived here. And that's Alfred in the background. And he says, So interesting, isn't it, Master Jason, Alfred? Not sure what you're trying to say, Alfred. Just that every time you stop by the mansion to visit, Master Bruce seems to have just left. Yeah, well, timing is everything, right? And I wouldn't, I know I wasn't always, he said, no, I said, I said down here he says, Alfred, can I ask you a question? Always. I know I wasn't always, I mean, I know I kind of tried to do everything my way. And this is funny, Alfred says, that might be putting it mildly. And Jason Todd is someone who still seeks the approval of his adoptive father, Bruce Wayne, Batman. He says to Alfred, do you think Batman ever, you know, regretted taking me on, believing in me? And Alfred gives him an honest response when he when after Jason says this, do you think I was a disappointment to him? Oh my, I love this honestly, Master Jason, not once, not one moment of one day, Master Bruce always believed in you, even in your darkest days. We all did. That's something each of us needs to hear from time to time. That those around us still believe in what we're doing and what we want to do. You know, in, in us, basically. Would you mind giving me 
A moment, Jason says, Of course, Master Jason. And if anyone asked, you were never here. <laughs> so then, Jason Todd and Bizarro are flying. I mean, no, <laughs> Bizarro's flying. J uh, Jason Todd's on the, the one driving the motorcycle. Bruce kept it in the vault. Just in case. Because he went there to get something. In case he had to kill his friend. That's beautiful. That's beautiful scenery. I, mean, I know it's a comic book, but still, it's beautiful. No one was supposed to know it was there. Not the first rule I broke. And so, and so, Jason Todd's bringing him out here to do something. Not the last. So they are sitting out there looking at this beautiful sunset and I have to say, I have to say you know it is it's like a painting if I could if I if I could take that out and frame it to put it on my wall I would that's how beautiful it is And Jason says, first time I saw this place, it scared the hell out of me. Bizarro's more simple-minded. Read him and frightened of pretty? Because that's how he sees everything that they're looking at. as pretty. I was raised on the streets of Gotham. Buildings so tall, so close together, it felt like nighttime, even during the day. It was easy to hate the world when I only knew a small part of it. Bizarro, not hate world. Even when in glass room, inside looking out, me had memories of better place. Man and woman sending me away from a world on fire. Another man and woman loving me. Him? Me remember fields. Me remember first time Bizarro stepped into sky. Friends and secrets, truth and justice, American way. But me am not stupid. Am not my memories. Never mine. And th this is something that's almost heartbreaking. Bizarre realizing that everything in his head is not, is something he never experienced. And thoughts someone put into Bizarro's head. am like Bizarro's mind and heart not good enough. Bizarro's real memories not start until read him and read her. That's how much he thinks of them. And this is what Jason Todd w brought him out there to do. Bizarro am not perfect, but read him. Show me how. And me promise to be the best Bizarro me can be. And Jason Todd was going to shoot him with a kryptonite bullet. But he can't do it. He just says, come on, it's late. Let's get you back home. And he says, can Red Him stay longer? Me like this place. And then it, this issue ends where they're still looking at the sunset. And it's a beautiful page. I mean, just, it's like something that should be hanging in an art gallery. That's how beautiful this page is. I love it. The, the detail of the trees, 
the coloring in the sky, which is something that I often see in the nighttime. Next, who is Artemis? So this issue, number seven, it was enjoyable. It was a little disappointing to see Artemis, you know, like almost like she has a flat chest. And I mentioned that because it's a change in detail. You know, for six issues, not and and also counting not not counting the first one because she was not in the one shot. In six issues, she had a busty chest, and that was part of that was part of her. But in this issue, we don't see it. We see her. We see her dressed down and not even looking like herself. I mean, where was her red hair? It should have even it should have shown up even in the darkness. But that's just my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Did you like this issue? Did you not like it? Leave your comments down below. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe to Spirit Comics and smash that bell like She-Hulk so you can be notified of all new uploads. Also, like the review if you enjoyed it, and share it with someone else who would enjoy who would enjoy it too. I'm Michael for Spirit Comics. Till next time, true readers.